Hola! What is going on, everybody? Everybody, 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 everybody. I use the music, but I don't want to get another copyright strike. How you guys doing out there? It is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, and welcome to the dark side of the room. And this is the show where we're going to be talking about one or two different things that uh, have been weighing on us a little bit. This is part of my story, part of my experiences, and I get the feeling that I am not what we used to call back in my day terminally unique. So, welcome to the dark side of the room. Mm. I am not happy with, uh, yeah, my background is just like, brr, brr, it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And of course, I never put my phone on mute. Anyway, how you guys doing out there? What's up? What's up? What is up? What is going on? How are you guys doing? Yada, yada, and yada. So we are going to be talking about a few things today. And of course, those things are pretty cool, pretty interesting, and all that stuff. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of just a little bit of business here real quick. Just a little bit of business. Just tiny tiny bit of business and um yeah because we got to get everybody up to speed on the stuff we're doing and all that jazz so if you guys want to be part of the show today um you know join us over in np city also known as the chat and um if you guys don't actually want to get into any conversations and any any of that stuff i totally understand but I've got my magic mirror here, my little device that's been through heck and back. And pull up an email. Do the to type thing and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at back in the deck or at gmail.com. Um, hit us up on social media. That's Twitter at back in the deck, Instagram at back in the deck. Um, and if you were part of that um, wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call Facebook, then I would say um, join Deckers on the Book. That's right, Deckers on the Book. It is the Facebook group where we talk and all that stuff. And it's not like a 4chan page like that because our moderators are serious about keeping everything cool and making sure that everybody is welcome as long as you you being welcome doesn't mean somebody else isn't you know what i mean so it's one of those things now we've got some other stuff coming down the aisle today which is fun and when i say fun i mean we've got some really fun stuff um that's coming down um if you guys do, 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 now if you guys um really like the stuff that we're doing and all that stuff i appreciate it i appreciate it a lot um also if you guys want a little more interaction well when you're watching this on youtube push like subscribe all that other stuff uh patreon link is down in the doobly-doo and of course um speaking of patreon if you like what we do and we provide you with more value than coffee refill um, then head over to patreon.com slash bid under, or underscore p. That's right. Um, over at the Patreon, um, you can sign up, become a Decker, get access to Patreon-only polls, the whole archive, um, and at the higher tiers of $20 a month or more, we shout you out at every show that we do, just like we're shouting out to Her Majesty Shannon Boom Boom Lay, His Majesty Paul David Mansfield, Mansfield, and our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. Now, if you guys are wondering, like, what is the purpose? Why, why should I do some sort of, um, you know, why should I do the Patreon thing? Um, well, it's simple. Um, we've got more stuff there than we actually post on Facebook and stuff. Um, like the games that we run and, you know, you guys get to see Deckers in real life playing games just like you guys would. Um, and currently we have a poll up right now for the Monday show being Dark Side of the Room. Um, and, or sorry, Buster Recap. This is Dark Side of the Room. 
right now the patrons get to vote on what next week episode is gonna be so yeah doing retro reviews right now because there's just so much to watch and you know how like when you're doing a thing every week over on um over on like um a streaming service like netflix or amazon everybody's watching the same thing so it's like um i don't need to tell you guys about the tiger king everybody knows about the tiger king except me i haven't watched it but uh, i'm thinking you know what i'm gonna start doing stuff that i like you know i, I like so right now the poll um, is between The NeverEnding Story, Labyrinth, and Ralph Bakshi's The Hobbit from 1977. Um, that's going to be our topic for next week. So that is going to be a thing. And all you got to do to join that is head over to patreon.com and sign up at a, at a dollar. It's a dollar a month. Um, if you feel like doing more, I ain't going to stop you. <laughs> I ain't going to stop you unless you can't afford to do that. I don't want kids stealing their parents' credit cards and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I want to talk a lot of, about some stuff today. I kind of left a teaser in our announcement as it was coming down because um, I saw some stuff. I saw some stuff that disturbed me. Now, everybody who is regular to this channel knows that the number one thing the number one thing that being a decker is about is there is a place for you in a community okay i mean we're we're open we're open like hey come on in you know we got rules we got rules we got guidelines just like everybody else but the number one rule and guideline is this is mostly your guys's group mostly and when i say mostly it comes down to this we are about inclusion so if you're going to be here you have to find a reason for yourself to be here and for other people to be here because i'm not sure if you guys are watching this with your eyes i don't know if it's up i got a copy strike yesterday so i don't know if this is going to be on um i, I really don't know if this is going to be on um people's mobile devices but i'm a great big black guy and i have been a nerd my entire life um if you guys hit to youtube and hit the archive of this show you guys get to hear my story and um most of my story comes down to what black people don't play games you know black oh you're black but, but i i you're black and you like comic books you're, you're, oh my God. And I hear the same thing when it comes to girls and LGBT and um, trans and especially the poor. Oh my God. Um, and very few places have I seen it as prevalent than in the two factions of the gaming community. The gamers, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, we got uh, over here in MP City. What's going on, guys? How you doing? I ain't forgot about you. I ain't forgot about you over in MP City. What is going on? Yeah, it geeks me out. Sitting up. Girls don't play ga play this game, but gr but girls don't girls don't game. Guess what? Um, sorry to tell you guys, but historically speaking, women have been involved in computer sciences since the beginning. We're talking the late 1800s, women have been crunching numbers and making computers go. And guess what? If you do anything, you're gonna play a game about it. It's just, it, it, it's that simple. You're gonna gamify any of your work. You know, so shout out to the Hidden Figures women who got us to the moon. And, oh, wait, I'm sorry, the seven women who made video gaming possible in the early 80s. I mean, seriously, these were household names. It wasn't until the 1990s when gaming, um, video gaming started getting marketed to boys. Okay, and since then, there's been this big toxic thing, um from a lot of video game boys about exclusion and whenever that becomes the culture you get people who suffer at the who suffer the consequences of it who also perpetuate it okay um this is where we get black trump supporters this is where we get um 
this is where we get like racist LGBT people and it's like disenfranchised is disenfranchised y'all so if you're already typing away at your keyboard saying don't you tell me how to enjoy my game I don't want to discuss this I do not want to argue with you because I'm not attacking your quality as a person I'm not attacking your character Okay, I'm not calling you bad people. I'm just saying this isn't the place for you and you have a lot of places out there that you can go. It's like when I talk to my white friends about the suburbs, you know, and how dangerous it is for me to walk around the suburbs because anybody could call the police. The police can show up, say they fear for their lives and I get five bullets to my chest and they're like, well, we can't walk around Compton. I'm like, yeah, you can. <laughs> because even if the police do show up, you're not going to get harassed for being in Compton. You are going to be politely escorted out while they're checking to see if you're okay. I've watched it happen more than 10 times. So it, it's one of those things where if people don't feel like they have a place that they can belong because of the circumstances of their birth, y'all can come on over here. You know, there's a lot of things in, um, in tabletop gaming that has been the same thing. Now I get that it's a hobby that started the Midwest and there isn't, well, the Midwest is very homogenous, you know, especially in places that you can, um, um, that you can see weather. If it snows, there's not gonna be a lot of ethnic people there, you know, at least ethnic or people of color, you know, because most of the people of color come from ancestrally they come from places that snow ain't really a factor um take it from me i'm here in la we don't get snow we barely get rain and when we do get rain nobody knows what to do with it because when you're driving in la the stupidity is freeze-dried <laughs> um but whenever people talk about these things there's a word that comes up and this word gets on my last nerve. It just tap dances on my last nerve. And y'all can think that this is a hot take or not. I don't care. Okay. Um, this show is about my daily experiences as, as a person of color living in a disenfranchised um, class, you know, in this country. And I ain't alone in this. Okay. Um, this word that comes up is real now the only time i ever like hearing the word real is when i'm being questioned about the voices that i hear and um and when it comes down to um um when it comes down to property ownership that's the only reels i like no that voice isn't real and yes that estate is real that's about it that, that's about where i like real and i'll tell you why um, in modern conversation, the word real does not come up positively in conversation enough. It just doesn't. Um, when a disenfranchised person is talking about the struggles that they go through every day, there's always somebody, always somebody there who has the subtext of protecting themselves and their own ego um, who drops the word real. That's not real sexual harassment. Real sexual harassment requires a ski mask and someone with a pair of bolt cutters. Um, that's not real um, racism. There's no crosses burning. You don't see any swastikas. But they don't get to determine what's real because what they're saying is I can see myself doing the thing that you are obviously in pain from. So if I discredit the legitimacy of that, I can feel okay about myself. And I'm just like, yeah, ain't about you. Ain't about you. It's about the person that's talking about how much they hurt. Okay. Um, and I'm talking about this because let's face it. If you're living in the United States of America and watching this, you have not been allowed to live your life for 26 days. You've been stuck in the house. You can't go outside. Um, you might be able to get some fresh air by walking your animal, um, or you are an essential employee and you have to go to work 
knowing that you might, you know, shuffle off this mortal coil or cause a senior citizen around you that you like or not like to do this. So we're a little sensitive and I figure, you know what, I can get a little real right now. Um, now the other day, um, um, the real thing, this is the other part. Okay, and this is the big reason that I started this entire company, this entire endeavor. The other part that real gets in is a matter of gatekeeping, not as protecting the ego of the person that's trying to invalidate someone else's experience. Sort of. I mean, it is an ego thing, but it comes down to gatekeeping. Yeah. And they can put any of those cards back in the deck because, um, you know, I've been a nerd for a long time, a long time, since before the movie, The Revenge of the Nerds. Um, hey, what's going on? Hey, it's Vine Constrict. Um, and for some reason, there's been doubt at my nerddom based on the color of my skin, and I can explain why, okay? There are a lot of stereotypes, and before we go on, I'm going to give you context for that word, because a lot of people are like, stereotypes exist for a reason. Yeah, um, jerkiness, okay? It's really easy to classify a huge group of people under certain common traits, okay? Basketball players are tall, um, generally. Basketball players are generally tall. Um, people who play volleyball tend to have strong legs. Um... People who are good at math tend to be very decent at reasoning, okay? These are all stereotypes that, that come about, or these are all archetypes, okay? Just like you have the brain, the princess, the basket case, the athlete, and the criminal. Um, these are all archetypes. And the difference between an archetype and a stereotype is that the archetype is where the thought about the people begins. And a stereotype is where it ends. Okay? Um, common stereotype for being a black guy. I'm cool. I'm cool. I can dance. I can play sports. I can, I can, I can, I can. Um, and the fact of the matter is, that is an archetype of black people. And there are reasons for that. Most of them are socioeconomic given to the environments that we're in and the activities that we can afford to do because of our economic circumstances. However, there is more to me as a black person than I'm cool. Example, I suck at basketball and football. I'm hydrophobic, so swimming ain't really my thing. Track, I don't like to run. Okay. Um, you know, there is a terrible, terrible, very racist stereotype of people that come from the inner city be them black white or latino um if you have if you're financially insecure then you have a low, lower iq now that's a serious stereotype that a lot of people have and it ain't it, it's there's a lot more to it it's a reduction and sorry to tell you um I've got paperwork saying that I'm a certified genius and look at the archive. I can show you when we burned my city to the ground, but I'm a very intelligent man. Okay. I am a very intelligent man and I was a very intelligent kid. So when I come across other nerds that have never been exposed to my culture, the stereotype makes their thinking stop. So that's where these things come in. Okay. So they get stuck on these stereotypes and not only does their thought process stop there, but they refuse. It's almost like an act of will to continue the thought from that point. Okay. And I've suffered from this at my time in the past. I am a musician. Okay. Um, reluctant, but a musician yet still. I studied music theory, I learned how to play the bass, blah, 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 blah. And on a scale of one to 10, I'm a solid four, okay? Um, but when I see a woman holding an instrument, 
I don't look at her as a musician. I look at her as a woman with an instrument, which is funny because my favorite guitarist of all time is um, Nancy Wilson from Heart at me. Um, but yeah, seriously. Um, so I ain't perfect about this, but I'm trying. Okay, I'm trying to grow. Um, so when it comes to nerd culture people have to ask themselves the question what about this person's circumstances of birth makes them not the same thing i am okay why is that so strong um i've gone to over 200 conventions over the course of my life and unfailingly i see women questioned on whether or not they like science fiction and not like hey do you like science fiction i like science fiction too but oh so you're a star trek fan well let me give you a whole bunch of quizzes that nobody in their right mind would be able to answer and it flashes me back to um one of the talks that black folks have to have with their kids about having to be 112 times better than their white contemporary just to even get in the door you know, and the same has applied for women for a long time. And it's like, no, you like Star Trek. You like Star Trek. You're a sci-fi fan. You're a sci-fi fan. So, um, so yeah, this all comes down to that word real. And my problem with gatekeeping, my problem with this kind of gatekeeping is there is no circumstance that I'd be okay with it. However, I'd be less angry if there was a codified criteria for it. Okay, a codified criteria. Um, example, if you wanna call yourself a filmmaker, the criteria for being a filmmaker is finishing a film. Once you have finished a film, then you are officially a filmmaker because you have made a film. Unless you are working in the field of manufacturing a film stock. <laughs> And if you manufacture film stock, you're also a filmmaker. But see, these things are measurable and quantifiable, observable and inarguable. Okay, and when it comes down to people doing gatekeeping, that ain't the case. It's always one of these things of, well, you don't live up to my criteria, so you must not have done anything in your life. Because my point of view is the only point of view out of 7.3 billion people on Earth. That, that is beyond hubris. That, that, that goes past hubris to the realm of just plain idiocy. All right, absolute idiocy. Because um, there really is no set criteria to determine who's a real fan um, and who does whatever hobbies. Now, as you guys know, I got out of tabletop miniatures games competitively because of this mindset, this competitive mindset, this unless you can beat me, you are not will, you are not capable you're not qualified to occupy the same building as i do and if you're new to this channel we don't cuss <laughs> uh we don't we don't get very um we don't get gra very graphic in our speech i want this to be an all ages show so that everybody can get can get some of these lessons and share my experiences but i will say this mother hubbard right here is telling me that i'm not welcome to talk about this same thing i spend my money and time on because i don't spend the same amount of money and time on as them like it's one thing to be able to keep up with the people around you as far as qualifications go okay i i get that i get that um again you get the title of filmmaker once you finish a film but there's a lot that you can learn from listening to conversations between like Spielberg and James Cameron and and um, Edgar Wright and, you know, even Z even Zack Snyder. I keep wanting to call him Snack. I don't know why. Snack Cider. I don't know. It's called a speech impediment or because I want him eaten by something. Um, 
But the whole um the whole thing is yeah, there are tiers, there are levels. But the problem with this gatekeeping is that the way that these things are held is this is the level I'm on and you don't get to keep the company of me or my friends until you go away and train on top of some mountain away from me and come back and and then you can best me in combat i'm like this is not a 1965 akira kurosawa movie i'm like dude what are you talking we don't make money off of this you know um there was a point where i worked at a game store okay and um I love playing games, but guess what? Um, I wasn't paid enough to pay my rent and pay for internet at the same time. This was back in like 2003, okay? So things were a lot more expensive. Um, and, or at least internet was a lot more expensive. So I was incapable of subscribing to websites, keeping up on the errata, blah, 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 um, because I literally didn't make enough money to do it, okay? And there were some people that were like, well, you shouldn't work at a game store if you can't keep all the way up on everything, and I'm like, um, yeah, see, there's this thing called adulthood, so until you're paying for everything out of your pocket and things aren't paid for by your parents' credit card, you can't tell me where I'm qualified to work because your idea of how things go isn't reality okay um especially since you know they were talking about a singular game or they played a singular game and my job was to literally read no less than six game books a week okay just just think about that think, think about that was part of my job and I had to I pretty much had to know the stock and be able to explain the stock. So, yeah, I read six game books a week, but nope, I'm not up on the errata that was dropped while I was at work. Bah! You know, that's what I have to say. Pa. You know, but why am I talking about this? Why am I getting so real today? I'm going to tell you. Um, I saw this the other day. And I almost hurt someone. It's from somebody named Renee. I blacked out everything else so that if this gets out on the web, nobody, um, you know, nobody, nobody does anything. But it's like, no, you're not a gamer. I'm so sick of all these people who think they're gamers. No, you're not. Most of you aren't even close to being gamers. I see these people saying, I put well over 100 hours into this game. It's great. That's nothing. Most of us can easily put 300 plus in all our games. I see people who only have the Nintendo Switch and claim to be gamers. Come talk to me when you pick up a PS4 controllers, then we be friends. Also, dear all women, Pokemon is not a real game. Animal Crossing is not a real game. The Sims is not a real game. Mario is not a real game. Standard Valley is not a real game. Mobile games are not real games. Put down the baby games and play something that requires challenge and skill for once. Sincerely, all of actual gamers. All of actual gamers? To quote one of my people. Quote one of the people that I watch all the time on YouTube. Let me tell you something. Okay, let me tell you something. Number one. Number one. <coughs> I have a personal embitterment against you saying that you're a real gamer. Guess what? Games existed before video games. All right. I was playing Dungeons and Dragons when the Atari 2600 was something that only freaking rich people had. Number two. Number two. What do you do for a living? Okay. Are you sitting on some sort of Council that determines what a real gamer is what an actual game is because I'm telling you this a game designer who makes a game like Mario or Animal Crossing and all that stuff they can tell you that they are making games and the people playing it they're having fun with it 
So what makes what what makes a game? What requires skill and 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 challenge and and all that stuff? And and third off, if you were to go into their world playing Mario and Animal Crossing and The Sims or or any of the things that you specifically put out there, Rennie, would you get your face stomped? Hmm? Would you go in and just wave your hand and magically win if you played a game like theirs since you're so much better? All right, I can tell you this, all right? I know MMA fighters that can beat the crap out of martial artists. I know boxers who can beat the crap out of MMA fighters. All right, guess what? It's all fighting. And all of these things are games. And you don't get to determine what a game consists of. Because I think the people at Hasbro would have something to say about that. Since they've been, oh, I don't know, making billions of dollars on games that don't make any beeps. All right? So number one, you don't get to say who a gamer is because coming from someone who was playing games before you were born, if we're setting down criteria... You don't live up to mine, so you ain't a real gamer, so you can STF you. However, the other part of this thing that I really want to address, okay, the part that's making me just over the top, okay, is this. I put over 100 hours into this game. Well, we put over 300 hours. Oh, okay. So you're saying that you're a gamer because you've got nothing else going in your life. Because I can say from a grown person's perspective that if you've got a full-time job and anybody in your life that you care about, you ain't got 300 hours to put into anything other than the maintenance of your life. Gamer. You know, you're painting a really bad picture of these people. Really bad. Okay? So I'm sorry to tell you. Let me see here. Oh, what else? Oh, yeah, I only have the Nintendo Switch and claim to be gamers. Do not get me started on the fiscal buy-in, you privileged piece of human garbage. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Ugh. As you can see, I'm a bit emotionally activated, okay? Because one thing I've always hated about gatekeeping is... If you don't come from a rich family, you're not allowed. Just think about that. If through no actions of your own, you don't have the six or seven hundred dollars that are liquid to drop down on a video game system because, you know, you're too young to work. Then you don't get to be a gamer. All right. Now, we live in a good time. We live in a very good time. All right. When I was growing up, a desktop computer was close to about $1,200 um, $1, for all the comp excuse me, for all the components that made up, um, all the components that made up a computer, okay? I come from a poor family, so because I'm poor, I don't get to be in your little club, I don't get to appreciate games. You know, because I can't afford to be in your little club. Okay, I don't, I just don't have the money. Because you know what? These are the same people um, that will complain if they're not allowed into somewhere because of the way that they're dressed. I'm sorry, you're not wearing Versace. Get out of my hotel. You know, you don't make enough money to be included in our elite group. So these are people... So these are people that are being jerks. It, it looks like they're being jerks because it's just their turn. I'm sorry, a PS4? I do this for a living. I can't afford a PS4. You know, I really can't. And not only can't I afford it fiscally, but if I got a PS4 and started playing a bunch of games, I wouldn't be able to put out videos of this content or of this quality, let alone what I'm trying to improve to. So I'm sorry to tell you, it's just, one of those things, you know, you, you, you guys, you, you, you don't get to do that. You don't, you don't get to put a monetary barrier onto what a person can do with their own time. 
okay? That that's not the whole thing. And <clears throat> next point, and of course I'm saving the biggest part for last, okay? Also, dear all women, oh wait, sorry. Dear all women, Pokemon is not a real game. Yeah. Now, this hurts. This hurts, but it's the reason I brought up the stuff at the beginning. A woman posted this, and she's commenting to all women that games that have made billions on the market, billions, all right? I'm sorry to tell you, Pokemon is a game. It is challenging. It lives up to all the criteria that you put up there, and it has pulled in Bezos money. How do I know? I was there. I was there when the first Pokemon was released on the Game Boy in the 90s. I was there. I was an adult. Okay? This is a big thing on this. Okay? I watched the evolution of this stuff. I was there for Mario Brothers in the old cartoon cabinets that you had to pump quarters into. Quarter after quarter. All right, you want to talk about gaming credibility? You can't talk to me until you can tell stories about having to search your mom's couch for freaking quarters to go stand in line at a damn liquor store to play Street Fighter. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's a big thing. And I'm sorry. If it says game in the marketing and it makes money as a game, and it was designed by a game designer, by a game company, then it's a game, okay? You would probably be real mad and starting fights with me in the comments if I said you're not a person. I mean, seriously, you know, you're not a person because a person would accept other people the way that they are. A person, would take a look at how somebody spends their time and their passions and say, you know what? You might not be up to my same fiscal level or you might not have put as much time into this, but I'm glad you're having fun. A person would be a lot kinder and not put out in a public forum how much better they are than someone else. But see, I'm not going to deny you of your personhood because... I'm better than that. I understand that this is the culture that we've cultivated, okay? I do, I don't like it, but in order for me to do anything about it, I have to accept that it is what it is. It is what it is, but it doesn't have to be, okay? It's why I started this company. Because guess what? You like Animal Crossing? Cool. You play games. You like online multi, uh, massive multiplayer online games? Cool. As a matter of fact, you're helping to pay the rent of quite a few of my friends. Do your thing. If you like playing games of any kind, except for mind games in your relationship, you're a gamer. Sorry to tell you. Let me think. A gamer. A person who plays games. That is all. Okay, I don't care if it's part cheesy or freaking Quidditch. Or freaking um, Blood Bowl or Warhammer or um, Call of Duty or Final Fantasy. If you like JRPGs, cool. You're a role play gamer. If you like D&D, you're also a gamer. If you play Cyberpunk 2020 on the PS2, um, the massive golden haired master race of the PC gamers, or with pen, paper, and dice, you're a gamer. If you like playing Moncala, you're a gamer. Because a gamer is someone who plays games. And you see, people, human beings, are bigger than singular titles. Okay? I am a musician and a gamer, and a podcaster, and a YouTuber, and a Twitcher, 
and a boyfriend and a father and a son <laughs> and a teacher and a student of many things we can wear a lot of hats regular people can wear a lot of hats not to mention a wizard a scholar like i can just go on and so can you you're more than a singular title each of you out there you're more than a gamer or a sci-fi fan you're someone's daughter or son or either i'm not quite sure what the adjective for a non-binary person on that would be but you're you're someone's offspring you know many of you were siblings all of you are friends to someone many of you are pet owners many of you are writers and creators and many of you are appreciators of that which has been created you know you are bigger than that and let me explain why i have so much outrage around all this because i get mad at a lot of things it's true i do but i get mad at one huge concept which is this if you're out there watching this renee renee last name redacted you're better than this you're a lot better than this okay there was a point where you were a beginner and if you were treated like crap at the beginner at the beginning i'm sure you didn't enjoy it now you might have had the passion and the gumption to stick to it to become however elite you are in your gamer skills but was that the experience that you wanted you see you're on the other side now okay and this is something that every adult has to really wrestle with okay i was born in the 70s and i don't know no i know one person one person out of the thousands of people that I've met and been friends with over the course of my life. But one person that I know had a happy childhood. Okay? All of us had terrible childhoods. All of us have issues. Matter of fact, I don't think I know more than five people that aren't on medication, in therapy, or both. And three of those five people need it but can't get it because of medical insurance costs. Okay? Things have not been good. And things are not good now. But what's important is that when we make it through this, we have a choice. We have a choice to make things better for the people that follow us so that they don't have to go through the same tears and the same feelings of exile and the same feelings feelings of unworthiness of of doubt of anger of of exclusion that we went through we can we can stop that for the people coming behind us or we can pass it on because it's our turn and honestly i know deep down in my soft and squishy bits that every single one of us is better. Every single one of us is better than the people who did us harm. Even the people that did us harm, they're better than that. All they have to do is make their actions match their actual character. You see, I don't judge anybody's character. I really don't. Sometimes I get caught up in the language, okay? But I think that I think that everybody is fundamentally good. I really do. I think that deep down, people are fundamentally good. I do. I think that everybody's a good person. Now that doesn't give them excuse to do crappy things. It really doesn't. And if they do crappy things, that doesn't make them a bad person. However, that also doesn't absolve them from having to fix it. Okay? We all do crappy things. I can write books about the terrible things that I've done over the course of my life. And I've done some terrible things. 
I'm not ashamed of the stuff I've done in my past as much as I'm putting that energy toward fixing the damage it caused. Okay? And this is a big thing. I'm, I'm trying to fix that damage. Because my actions did not match my character. So, this person that's saying you're not a gamer and all you gatekeepers out there I am daring you to act, to be in your actions as good as you want to be and as good as I think you are. Okay? And I realize, I, I realize that it's tough. Again, y'all don't know what I've had to go through to be a gamer, how much soft racism I've had to put up with um at gaming tables and in larps y'all don't know how many places i've been followed around because people were afraid that i was going to steal something you know i actually had a job where someone saw that the boss was racist so they started stealing a whole bunch of stuff as soon as the negro got the job and then like clockwork, though they were stealing a bunch of things and I was getting the blame, they didn't come forward and do anything. They just stole more stuff. You know, they stole more stuff and they didn't come forward about, no, you're wrong about Solar. You're wrong about him doing this. He's not stealing. He's not doing this. You know, they didn't do that. They profited off of other people's racism toward me. I get that. But I'm not an act of vengeance kind of guy. Okay? What breaks my heart is that we all have stories. We all have things that we can talk about as far as how we've been screwed over. Okay? We all do. We all have stories about how we've been screwed over by games and previous relationships and family members and stuff that we've done. Again, none of us had a pleasant childhood. Okay? But just because we were screwed over in the past, we don't have the right to pay that forward. We don't. It's our job to be better, even more so than the innocent because we know how much it hurts experientially. And deep down, in places I don't talk about at parties, generally because people are too drunk to have a real conversation, I know that people want to see themselves as heroes. They want to see themselves as, you know, the main character of every movie, the special one, the good one, the good guy, the one that, you know, the one that saves the day. This is how we do it. Okay. We prevent the pain that we've suffered from happening again. And if people are going, well, that's just gaming culture, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, guys. I come from gun culture, prison culture, and drug culture. So if I went to your kids giving them, oh, I don't know, cocaine and firearms, that wouldn't be okay. But it's only different in degree, not in kind. And I don't think that passing on that pain is, I, I don't think that exemplifies who we are, okay? Not as people or Americans or gamers or whatever you want to call yourself, you know? As the people that we are, I know that we're better than that. I do. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard because wherever we go in the culture, the loudest of the people are the ones that are that painful. Now, am I saying, you know, be louder and all that stuff? No, because you can't do good work with terrible tool tools and you can't build something great in a paradigm of terrible. Okay. You either got to tear it down or start your own. So welcome to back in the deck productions. You know, um, 
We are no better than anyone else. And no one else is any better than us. Okay? We're not passing down that stuff. If you put 35, 40 years into a game, good for you. Okay? I know I have. But that don't make you better. There's nothing wrong with being a beginner. Nothing. And sorry to tell you, but we have an expression in my social class called each one, each one teach one or throwing down the ladder when you get out the hole. You know, you know, throwing down the rope when you finally make it up to the top. I live by that. I'm real about that. Okay. Because no one, no one succeeds by themselves. Okay. Most of the time, anyone who keeps their own counsel and doesn't ask anyone questions, they tend to go insane. <laughs> they really do. They just, um, they, they go nuts. And these are the people that contemplate suicide most and all that stuff. Um, but you know, that, that's, that's a different subject. But what I will say is that every person who works their butts off, they work for someone. And that someone gave them the chance to work their butts off. So they didn't do it by themselves. You know, um, all the studying that you did and playing all those years, there were people that let you in their games. There were people that let you learn their games. You know, there were people that showed up to your games. You know, when you go online and you play, hey, there are loads of people making sure that electricity still works. Okay, we are interdependent as a species and as a society. And it's not about being better than the next guy. It's really about being better than who you were before. So, Renee? Yeah, Renee? You are incorrect in your assumption. They are gamers. And you are a gamer. And them being a gamer, or them being gamers, don't make you any less of one. And that scarcity thought process, that's, that's a dangerous thing. Okay? Um, I've talked many times about how I don't want to be the best at anything. Okay? Um, and how... I still need lots of therapy because people in my life would always tell me that I was terrible at something as soon as they found anyone who was better. It's not that I was good and they were better. It was that they were good and I was terrible. And that is a dangerous and damaging mindset to be in. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video called Tough Love and Why It's a Bad Idea. And I have a saying about tough love. In order to give tough love, you got to give the love first. Because tough love without love is just abuse. And most of the people that come down with these, th you're not real, you're not a real this, you're not a real that, they're doing just that. They are passing down abuse. Now, they might not ever stop. But I'm letting everybody who's talked to like that, everyone who's ever been a girl in games or a LGBT or a trans person or a poor person or a person of color in games, you know, or in anything that we are not the majority of, you know, we don't pass down that abuse. That's not what we're there for. It's not our job to to pass that down and to the people who do pass down that abuse i got some news for you you are better than that mindset because abstract thinking has no quantity which means there's no way to cheapen it it's it's not that there's going to be less of it Again, you are not bad because someone else is good. Okay? You perform terrible actions, but those terrible actions are not 
it, it's not relative. The definition of a terrible action is an action that causes harm to someone which does not go corrected or atoned for. Which means, you know, because everybody makes mistakes, everybody has accidents, that's cool. But the it becomes bad when there's no apology, when there's a dodging of responsibility. Like when a game developer writes a game that's sexist and then women go, hey, um, there's a real problem with the way that you depict women. And they go on with, well, it's meant to, it's meant to, it's meant to. It's like it didn't. You did a sexism. <laughs> so fix what you did. This has nothing to do with whether or not you are sexist. It's a matter of fixing what you did. And when you pass down abuse, you have to fix what you did. It has no bearing on whether or not you're a good person. A good person who accidentally kicks a baby if they're walking in a park and they and they trip and they kick a baby, they still kick the baby. It doesn't matter if they intended to or not, that baby's still been kicked. <laughs> so apologies are in order. Medical care might be sought. <laughs> And it has nothing to do with whether or not the person was good or bad. It's that simply, you know. So that's where I sit with that. Um, there's not a lot of people talking a lot in the chat today. We've got uh, got a couple of people in there talking about Anne Frank with the fundamentally people are good. You know. But yeah. Anyway, um, this has been on my mind because I saw that post like three, four days ago. I think I saw it on Saturday morning and I, I I'm just hot behind that because, um, again, we say every show. If anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, you tell them to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck. You know, it's that simple. You like games, you're a gamer. Done. And I won't have any arguments here. Okay? Those are the criterias for being a decker. And what gives me the right to set who's a decker? Because I started this. This is arthurial intent. It's that simple. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying you're not a decker if you don't give a dollar to our Patreon. <laughs> if you're here because you need somewhere to be because other people won't let you be yourself and won't let you like the stuff that you like because, oh, that's not a real thing. You should totally be doing this. Although I'm not going to pay for it. I'm not going to walk you through it. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to do anything like this. But you need to live up to these criteria for me to consider you equal. Ah, come on in. That makes you a decker. <laughs> it's it's that simple. If you're willing to tell those people to put those cards back in the deck and you're willing to be happy with what you do and to have fun with what you like, regardless of those people, if you're looking for places where, where you can just be you, you know, then you're a decker. Okay. The only criteria that you have to live up to is to not perpetuate that cycle. If somebody's interested in what you like and you're willing to tell them, you know, and you're willing to show them. And if they want to learn, dude, if you're willing to trade licks, as we say in the music industry, then you're a decker. <laughs> it's that simple. You know, <clears throat> I'm not saying that competitive players aren't deckers. Okay. Because... I might be the prime decker, but I'm not competitive. I just like playing games. But you know what? My lovely girlfriend is competitive as crap. She's a decker too. She likes playing games. She likes winning. But never, ever have I ever heard of her saying, well, you don't like the game that I like, so you are not equal to me. <laughs> just think about that. Okay? So... 
if there are people trying to infiltrate this thing saying, well, well, no, and they want to take over this place and troll and trigger the libs and all that stuff, there's the door. <laughs> you're welcome here as long as you behave. But the moment that you misbehave, you're out. Because there's an entire internet out there for you. It's that simple. We have codified rules. You know, if you want to learn about some geek culture, come on in. We'll be happy to tell you. You know, and it's that simple. But passing on the abuse that we've taken, that ain't welcome. You passing on the abuse that you're taking because that's your paradigm, have fun at your paradigm. You've created a completely different paradigm that's incompatible with ours and more power to you go have fun go do your thing you know go do your thing but if you if it turns out you hurt somebody and they they try and talk to you about it and you don't want to hear it you're definitely not welcomed here it, it's that simple because games have always been a place of respite even in um mesopotamia People played games to entertain their time and not think of things like drought, famine, and the horrors of war. You know, we're into escapism. We're into escapism on therapeutic um, stances. So, I've been ranting for a little while. But, um, so yeah, that's all. That, that's what I have to say. I think you guys are amazing. I do. Um... And I want you guys of, um, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I really, you know, I really want you guys to know that if anybody tells you that you're not that, you can tell them to put those cards back in the deck. Because, um, no, you play games, you're a gamer. You write things, you're a writer. You finish making a movie, you're a filmmaker. And yeah, I know that seems like a low bar. I've watched Asylum films, <laughs> but hey, you know what? It's there. You know, they're filmmakers. They may not be very good filmmakers, but you know what? Finished is better than perfect. <laughs> but if you guys want to have that conversation, cool. All you got to do is pull up your email and type in Back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. Hit us up on social media at Back in the Deck on Twitter, at Back in the Deck on Instagram. Um, feel free to listen to our stuff over on SoundCloud. Um, that's soundcloud.com slash B I D underscore P. Check out the YouTube channel. That's um, youtube.com slash C slash B I D or sorry uh yeah slash b i d underscore p 2112 that's right uh 2112 great album at me and um hit us up if you're on that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as facebook um join deckers on the book now if what we do here has touched you in any way and you get some value from it um if you think that that value is more than a coffee refill a month then just head on over to back in the deck or to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and mm, become a one dollar decker that's it a buck Woo! a buck per month it helps us keep the lights on and pay the internet bill and all that stuff and if you hit the royalty tiers ooh, at 20 50 or a hundred dollars a month then we shout you out in every single show that we're on um just like we're shouting out to shannon boom boom lay um, who's on our queen tier, Paul David Mansfield, His Majesty the King, and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer Crow. So, um, we hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope I didn't go off too much and all that jazz. Like, share, subscribe if you're, if you're, um, watching this on YouTube. And I really mean that. Share this. Um, not just so that we build the community. Full disclosure, this is not a monetized YouTube page. I just want to get the message out there. Maybe get some Patreon so I can pay the bills. But, you know, I don't want to risk... Um, I don't want to play the YouTube game to make all the monies. Um, I really just want to build the community and talk to you guys about this stuff. So, 
With that, just send us an email. And remember, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining me on the Dark Side of the Room.